Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Prep Hour with Steve series. It's Wednesday, the 21st of October, 5 p.m. on Brisbane on the east coast of Australia, where I'm broadcasting from right now. I hope this finds you all well and um, moving forward with your preparation for OET. So type in a hello, I'm getting lots of hellos. Just type in your location and the time. Share that with me while I do my final get ready here. Just waiting for the Facebook feed to come on. There it is. Just turn, yeah, that's all good. All right, just get my comment box working there. Greetings. Okay, everyone, let's get started. Thanks everyone for being here. We are good to go. All right, I can see lots of people. Hello in Myanmar. Hello in Kerala. G'day to Saudi. Hello over there in, um, where is that? UK. I can see Nigeria. Hello to Tessie in Nigeria. Johnson's over there in Malaysia. Hello to Devi in Saudi. Laws from London. Ghana. Hello, Richmond in Ghana. Bridget is there in Zimbabwe, um, Devika in Kerala, Abla in the UK, Nisha UAE. Hello to be joined, India, Alia down there in Melbourne. Um, so wherever you are and whatever point in time it may be, perhaps you're watching the video of this session. Hope you are well. Hello to Sudan. Now, just a quick question. Um, how many nurses do we have today? Type in N if you're a nurse, everyone. This one's a special just for the nurses out there. Um, but I will say that the approach that we use today is going to be useful for all professions. So because it's still medical writing. Um, okay, so let's get started. Hello to Marketa. I see you there and lots of different faces. Wonderful to have you all on board. Okay, so um, we're doing nurse writing, something that's called the ISBA approach. Uh, how many of you know the word ISBA, I-S-B-A-R? I can see we have a lot of nurses. That's wonderful. Lots of nurses here today. Excellent. If you know what ISBA is, just type it in. And I'll just go through, um, just so you know, don't forget, we're on Facebook, OET Online Facebook. Uh, my name is Steve, as I said, I'm from OET Online. You can like us on the OET Online Facebook page, subscribe to us on YouTube, or visit our website at oetonline.net.au. We are broadcasting on the OET Online channels as well, because we run this series, the Prep Hour series, in conjunction with the OET Center. So thank you to them for helping us broadcast and helping us help you prepare for this exam. Uh, if you do want to know about the courses that we offer, jump on over to oetonline.net.au. We're easy to find. Um, and check out our free trial course to see how it all works. Okay, we do a weekly orientation every Monday if you want to find out more. And that's to find out, costs you nothing. Um, so please do. Okay, now I've got a few people knowing what ISBAR is. I can see some intro, situation, background, recommendation. Thank you, Kim. All right, I'm just going to ask you guys a few questions to begin with. So um, just some general questions, you know, OET writing, you know, it's um, writing in your second language is a challenge. 
any language learner will know that. I certainly experienced that when I was learning the Japanese language. And my teacher said to me, well, just practice, write an email. And I said, well, I don't know how. I could speak the language reasonably well, but I didn't know how to write in it. It's not the same thing. Um, so we all know that writing is a different field to speaking. So we need a plan. But a few questions to you all. Do you find it hard to complete the writing task within the time allowed? Are you unsure what information to include and what to leave out? Do you find it difficult to organize your letter in a clear manner? Are your letters too long perhaps due to difficulty summarizing? Or do you find it hard to focus on the main issue? Just type in your response to any of those questions there, everyone, and any of your thoughts about writing when you see that set of case notes. How do you feel? Do you feel confident or do you feel a bit worried? How do you feel? Um, Shine says yes. Yep. Linda says, could you discuss about the introduction based on OET criteria? Definitely we'll be looking at that, Lintu. Nisha says experiences the same thing. We're getting quite a few people who do feel that way. Okay, that's good to know. All right, well, we're going to address all those things. Uh, if you answered yes to any of those questions, you are not alone. Um, but there is a solution. And even Vinette says, yeah, difficulty in organization. I agree. It's challenging, isn't it? Okay. Um, Nisha says, what information to include? Yeah, and Aliyah mentions that. Tough, absolutely. And you've only got 40 minutes writing time, five minutes reading time. That's all you've got. So you really need a good approach. Methodist says sometimes. Bibi says the letters are too long. Okay. Charles says completing within the time limit. So I think I'm touching on something there. And Noma says summarizing is hard. Okay. All right. Let's have a look. So ISBAR, everyone. Now, ISBAR, it's a tool for organizing and planning. It's a very useful tool. Um, and I think if you apply this to your own writing for all the tasks that you do, if you keep this in mind while you're um, reading the case notes and while you're planning your letter, it's going to help you write a well-structured and organized referral letter, which is what you want. Because if you get all those aspects right, then you just need to worry about your language, um, which you can build um, through careful preparation. So, uh, and lastly, OET is not like other language tests. You know, OET includes criteria for organization. There are criteria for conciseness and clarity and for content. So you are, are assessed on all of these things in OET. Um, so it does tie in really nicely with a professional approach to preparing and writing your referral letters. So let's have a look what ISBAR is, everyone. So we go start with the I. I stands for introduce and identify. Who are you? When uh, Are you a nurse visiting the patient? Are you a nurse on a ward? Are you a GP? Are you some allied health professional? But who are you and where are you? That sort of information. Uh, who is the patient? Um, and that relates to the basics, their name, their age, their gender, their marital status, whatever uh, things that are relevant to describe them. They're quite standard in what's included. Uh, the why, why are you writing the letter? What's your reason? Um, that's quite important to uh, get clear early on in your letter. So that's I, everyone. Commonly the I can go in the introduction. S, S stands for situation. 
Now, situation is very important. It basically means what's happening now. What's the current state? The current state is always very relevant. So what, what the issue is, when, when is it happening? When did it start? I mean, important one, how, how severe is it? Is there an urgent situation? Is it moderate? Um, so how severe is the issue? Uh, situation, there may be an admission date uh, there may, or a discharge date even, it could be a diagnosis. Um, and also related to situation is uh, observations, your clinical observations, the most re recent vital signs. That's all part of the current situation, focusing on the issue. Then we've got B. B stands for background. So that's information that led to the, um, in the information related to the patient that led to the current situation. What was happening before? It's not necessarily related to the current condition, but it could be a contributing factor or some relevant information. So we need to look at that. Uh, it could include past medical history, medications, allergies, relevant social information. That's all in the background. Then we come to A, A for assessment. So that's you, that's assessment as a health professional. You've identified the problem, you know what it is, you've um, provided perhaps some uh, a diagnosis, um, you've observed now, what are you going to do? Um, what do you think the best approach is? So that includes uh, the symptoms that you're seeing, the investigations and the investigation results. All of that is part of the assessment. That's the clinical assessment that you do in your workplace, whether it be a hospital or a clinic, wherever it is. Finally, we get the, just go back one. Finally, we get the R. R stands for request. What, and that's just your request. What do you want the next profession, health professional to do? Um, because they're gonna provide continuity of care your role when you're doing that referral letter has ended, uh, at least temporar temporarily. So it's going on to the next health professional. So what is your request? That needs to be clear. Okay, now a little bit more about ISBA, because I really want you guys to use ISBA to consider it as a tool to help you. So what are the benefits? Well, Good thing about ISBA, it focuses on the health issue, not the health professional, not the person doing the treatment, um, but it just focuses primarily on the issue um, that is being treated. Um, that's a good thing. ISBA gives you a clear structure on how to plan and organize your letter because you know I'm going to talk about the, I'm going to introduce, identify my patient. I'm going to talk about the situation. I'm going to talk about the background, the assessment, and the request. You've got five letters. So that's five things that you can include in your structure. It's definitely going to help you to decide, to decide what information to include. And it reduces the chances of missing some important detail because you can check, have I explained the situation clearly? Have I provided the relevant background information? Is my clinical assessment that I provided clear? Uh, and importantly, it's adaptable to the OET exam because ISBA is a health industry standard approach. Many of you here know about ISBA. It's used in Australia, it's used in the UK, it's used in many, many regions. Many of your target destinations use ISBA. So if you are using ISBAR, you're preparing yourself for the workplace. And so that's the industry standard aspect. And it matches with the OET Center writing task and the criteria because OET is a workplace English test. So anything that replicates the workplace is a good thing. And, and we can see the OET are going to assess you on the purpose. 
So that comes for you identifying the patient and identifying the situation. Uh, the content, well, you're assessed on content. If you use ISBAR, you can have some confidence about your content. Conciseness and clarity, same thing. ISBAR helps you achieve that. Organization, ISBAR is a dream for organization because you've got a plan in mind on how to write your letter. It's gonna save you time as well because you're not gonna get worried about doing it the wrong way. You've got a industry standard approach. So it's gonna really help you with organization. And then genre and style. Well, it's clinical. ISBAR is a clinical approach. So genre and style assesses your clinical communication skills. So again, it aligns with that. Lastly, you've got language. That's the English component um, primarily. So that's a little bit of a separate area to ISBAR. ISBAR is not so much focused on language, but that's the skill building that you do. Okay, a couple more things about the benefits, everyone. Uh, it's a standardized approach used by many hospitals, and it can be used for any type of referral letter. It can be a discharge to community services. It can be used for urgent admissions for medical emergencies. It can be used for transfers to other departments, hospitals, locations, and so forth. So it's um, those big three, everyone, those big three types of tasks um, that nurses face but and other professions, um, really, really useful for that. Lastly, uh, very good for nurse-to-nurse -nurse communication. It's professional communication, nurse-to-nurse, nurse-to-doctor. That's a very common task nowadays with OET, the nurse-to-doctor task. So really good for that to help you focus. Uh, Nurse-to-allied health professional. Um, also, again, allow you to focus on your audience, whether it be a occupational therapist, a physiotherapist, a speech pathologist, a dietitian, whatever it may be. Um, useful for doctor to doctor. Doctors, I'm sure many doctors in the audience are aware of ISBA. Useful for that. Useful for doctors to allied health professional. Could be a doctor writing to a nurse, a doctor writing to an OT, um, a doctor writing to a dietitian or a physiotherapist. It helps you focus as well. And also allied health professionals often have to write for doctors. So ISBAR is a good tool for that. And finally, allied health professionals may be writing to other, other allied health professionals. It's useful. It's useful for medical referral letters, regardless of the type of letter, regardless of who you're writing to, as long as you're writing to another health professional. The only thing where it may not be so effective is when you're writing to a patient because this is a workplace communication tool. It's really focusing on communication between health professionals. Okay, that's the preamble, everyone. That's what it is. Let's see how we use it, everyone. So we're gonna look at a case today. It's a known case. This is task five, everyone, if you wanna know where this is. This is on the OET Center website. Uh, you'll find it under their um, uh, practice material. It's nurse task five, and it's Patricia Styles. That's the case, everyone. So I'm not going to go too much into this slide, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of background. The case is pericarditis, everyone. The task we're looking at is a patient with pericarditis. Um, the nurse has been seeing this patient suddenly the situation's got worse and this patient needs to be referred to a doctor due to quite a, um, to, due to possible complications associated with pericarditis, everyone. So that's what we're looking at here. That's our background. So we've got reading time, writing time, we know that. Read the following case notes and complete the writing task. Let's do this, everyone. Let's do this. Few questions, just to catch my breath. Uh, Anna says, 45, is it enough? 
and need to include relevant case note or it must have introduction. Yep, this is what's coming up for you, Anna. I think 45 minutes is enough. It's only 200 words, roughly. So it's not a long task. It's more about the quality um, that we're interested in. So I would say, yes, it is enough. Okay, here we go. Now let's just start reading this, everyone. So notes, you are a nurse conducting a nurse home visit as part of a routine follow-up care after this patient's recent hospital discharge. Now I said before, the who, so it says, you are a nurse conducting a nurse home visit. It's follow-up care for this patient. Uh, so and the patient has had a recent hospital discharge. That's our background. Patient, Ms. Ms. Patricia Stiles, 62. She's got an address. She's uh, got a social background, a retired primary school teacher, lives on her own. Husband died four years ago of lung cancer, no children. Okay, so if we look at the ISBAR approach, everyone, what we've just identified there, that's the I in ISBAR, everyone. Introduce and identify. So when you do go to write your introduction, that's where that information comes from. It's really well laid out. You're not going to include all of that information. You're going to select which information you need to introduce that patient. And what do you think, everyone? What do you want to use there to introduce the patient? Well, we said before, the age, yeah, um, possibly profession, a retired primary school teacher. That's a bit of background there. That's introducing her. Um, husband died three years ago. Okay, that means she's a widow. That could be useful. Lack of support, perhaps. Um, so we've got some basic information we can include there. Now, the medical history, hypertension. Uh, we've got a diagnosis, um, a little bit of extra information. So the diagnosis was in 2011. Uh, 2013, it's moderate. She's taking uh, medication for this. Um, but it is well managed. So that's good news with the hypertension. Uh, she has diabetes mellitus with a diagnosis date of 2013 and she is taking medication and it is well managed generally. Also has depression diagnosed in 2016 triggered by death of husband. So there's a bit of a link there with that social background. Uh, she has received counselling for that, for the mood swings um, and also support for that um, diabetes management. We've also got a family history, hypertension and diabetes mellitus in the mother, smoking it now in terms of her lifestyle, or she doesn't smoke, but she does have a couple of glasses of wine each week. Um, she exercises her dog 20 minutes a day, so she's doing a lot of good things. Um, for diet, she needs ongoing counselling um, to maintain that diet. And always pay attention to your verbs, everyone. When you see things like that, that's a good learning area for you we maintain a balanced diet so when you do go to write case notes be observant of the language used within the case notes perhaps you can borrow that for your own writing she's got a list of medications there as well that she takes okay so all that information everyone that's your b b for background that's your background information so that lends itself to writing a paragraph. We can write a paragraph about the background information. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to follow the same order as ISBAR. Uh, the background doesn't have to follow the order of the case notes. The background might be, depending on the type of letter it is, that background might be the least important information and it might come just before the conclusion. We don't know yet but we do know that we can organize it into one paragraph. Um, Mariam says, she's a widow, why not Mrs? Excellent question, Mariam. I thought the same thing myself, but this is, um, she may have chose, so this woman probably chose her title. She's entitled to. Nobody chooses a title for you, you choose it for yourself. So we can only assume that she preferred to go by the name Ms. That's the person's choice. That's not a decision 
made by the hospital, you know, the actual individual chooses their title. Okay, but quite often, quite rightly pointed out, you will see misses for widows. All right, this is the exception. Okay, so that's the B for background. Now we've got Green Valley Hospital treatment record. So this is related to the ho recent hospital admission. So on the 23rd, this is our first date, on the 21st of August, uh, she went to hospital, um, vis uh, she was visiting her sister, sister lives nearby, and she was admitted with uh, fever, sharp and pleuritic chest pain. It was worse on breathing, general weakness and malaise, tachycardia. So that was her symptoms on admission. Okay, so that's what happened. And then 24th, one day later, assessment. There's that word assessment. We spoke about assessment and here it is in the case notes as well. Nice. We've got the vital signs listed, the full examination here. Um, various tests were done, white cell count, um, the ESR and so on, throat swab for viral influenza, influenza type B. There was a chest x-ray and an echocardiogram which revealed pericarditis. That's our first mention, the first mention of this main issue, everyone. Management, IV saline and ibuprofen, that was management that was provided. An evaluation, she has viral influenza type B plus pericarditis. So it's an exacerbation, isn't it? A complication. Uh, on the 25th, one day later, she was discharged and advised to self on self-care at home. And the niece drove the patient home and agreed to stay overnight for three nights with a follow-up nurse home visit arranged on the 30th, one week later. So here, no prizes for guessing, that's the assessment. That's the assessment section of the ISBAR. So we've already got the, uh, we've introduced and identified, we've got the background. Now this section is the assessment, the details, um, and that's what relates to her chief complaint or diagnosis of pericarditis. There it is, everyone. Okay. Now I'm going to continue on. This is the nurse home visit on the 30th of August. Observations, patient unhappy. Uh, reports, which you got depression. Reports feeling chest pain, relieved by sitting up. Uh, she got shortness of breath, fatigue, and she's frustrated with the progress. Okay, this, she's frustrated. Medication adherence, she says she's compliant with, um, and there's regular blue, blood glucose monitoring for diabetes. Her vital signs, she has a low-grade fever, and then we've got the temperature, we've got an elevated respiratory rate and heart rate, and the blood pressure is lower it's usually 140 over 90 so there's something happening there and the niece is no longer staying overnight got work commitments in green valley assessment assessment by you the nurse patient unwell nil improvement this is a problem and the query a question mark relapse possible relapse so question mark means possible suspected complications of pericarditis. Okay, that's the assessment you've made. The plan, organize urgent hospital uh, transfer to Newtown Hospital, uh, which is the nearest one, write referral to the ED department, including the medication, patient history, test results and observation. That's what you need to do. So here we have it, everyone, the situation. Now, remember what I said earlier for ISBAR? The situation is now. So this is current. This is today's visit. This is the latest information. I'm going to ask you a question. Where do you think that would go in the paragraph? In, you know, people spoke about organisation. Where would the situation go, do you think? 
in the intro would you put the background before the introduction would you put the assessment before the introduction uh, before the situation where would you put situation have a think about that now Miriam says so if written miss getting back to the miss misses thing yes if written miss follow that that is my advice uh what if they're not giving miss or misses they normally do mm okay Miriam says put it after the introduction yeah the current issue after the intro a lot of people are saying after the intro yeah I, i'm kind of agreeing with you on that i think so because it's 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 quite an it says it's an urgent referral isn't it so i'm kind of agreeing straight after the introduction because it's urgent got to yeah it, it's an because this says an urgent case we really need to tell the doctor what's happening now yep main issue okay um we'll see this as we go along everyone using the information in the case notes write a letter of referral to the ed department consultant on duty outlining the case and requesting urgent assessment and management of pericarditis that's what we need to do and we've got we've got a little um, section there who we need to address it to case notes are always the same but worth reading expand the relevant case notes into complete sentences we will do that do not use note form yes that but that doesn't mean you can't use abbreviations everyone don't use note form means you can't use short form or dashes or things like that. It means it must be complete sentences. Use a letter format because it's a referral letter um, and the body of the letter should be approximately 180 to 200 words. That says body, everyone. So I suppose we could say the conclusion is not necessarily part of the body, but everything else will be. Okay. Last thing that we've got here, the plan, that's the request, everyone. So I've got situation, plan, organize, urgent hospital transfer. We said that's the plan. So that's probably going to be a, um, there's not, not a lot of detail in this request. It's not like a discharge. If it were a discharge in ISBAR, you might have a lot of requests. There might be many things that you want the next person to do. But because this is an admission, really, you just want them to um, provide an urgent assessment and management, take over the care. Um, that's what you want them to do. Okay. So if we go back, everyone, so look at that. We've got it. The I for introduce and identify, the B for background, and the A for assessment. That's all here. Now you can see the case notes don't follow the identical order of ISBAR. They don't. They just follow the timeline, uh, but ISBA doesn't follow the timeline. So the order's a bit, just when you think of ISBA, don't think of the same order. You don't have to. Just think of including all of the aspects, but not necessarily in that ISBAR order. Okay. But we've got three there. And then on this page, we've got the situation and the request. And my advice to you is go through all your different case notes and start applying this approach to it. Start organizing and looking at how, looking at the structure and deciding um, which sections you can see. This is really gonna help you on exam day with speed and understanding. Okay. All right, so now let's look. I've got the introduction and summary, everyone. So we've got the introduction written here and I've got two options for us, everyone. So in my introduction here, I'm gonna introduce as Isbar says, um, but I'm also gonna bring a little bit of the S, a little bit of the S, the situation, because I wanna make that clear. So we can blend a little, we can blend the I and the S a little bit here and you'll see how that works, everyone. So we put our date, who we're writing to, um, 
the address all laid out properly. That's copy and paste, everyone. Copy and paste from the task question. Dear Dr. Reed, Miss Patricia Styles, we've got a date of birth. Okay, so option one, I'm writing to prefer Miss Styles, a 62-year-old widow who requires urgent uh, assessment and investigations due to a suspected recurrence of pericarditis. So we, that's great. We know who the patient is. We know they're a widow. We've got their age. Uh, and we know that they need urgent assessment and investigation. So our purpose is there. And we also know why a suspected recurrence of pericarditis. Now that's come from the case notes, everyone. I think the case notes said relapse. This writer's used the synonym recurrence. When we come to the second part, the second option, a little bit different, everyone. Uh, I'm writing, I am a nurse. Look at this one, same, all the same details. But when it comes to the introduction, they've, this person's introduced themselves. I am a nurse providing home visits to Miss Stiles, who is a 62-year-old widow and retired school teacher. There's a little bit more detail in this one. Two sentences. She requires urgent assessment and investigations due to a suspected recurrence. So the rest is the same. Due to a suspected recurrence of pericarditis. So two options there, everyone. Let's analyze it a little bit. Well, the second one says who you are. The first one doesn't. Uh, they both got the age, the gender, marital status. Well, one says just a widow. The other has a bit. The second one's a bit more detailed, um, but they're both effective, everyone. I wonder, let me ask you, the viewers, do you have a preference? Imagine you're the reader. What, which would you have a preference for? option one or option two. And they both have that chief complaint and degree of urgency. Teddy says, is a 62 year old widow relevant to the doctor? Absolutely, Teddy, because remember we're doing ISBAR. ISBAR tells you, and just follow it, introduce and identify. That's industry standard. That's just what you do. It's relevant. There are many reasons why it's relevant, but you're basically saying who this patient is. It's not relevant to the surgery, perhaps, but it's, the, it's giving that you're identifying your patient. Okay. Now, some people are saying option one. Some people are saying option two. Good. And it's good to have different opinions. Um, I have a personal preference for option two just because it, says who you are, and might I add a point of difference? And you don't need to do that, but I would, um, and it's not going to be for every set of case notes, but who you are in relation to the patient does fit into the ISBAR framework. And if you do look at many sets of case notes, you will see little pieces of information that um, just set the scene a little bit, that provide the context for the letter. Makes it real, everyone, not just an exam, real communication. Okay. So that's what John says. Should we introduce ourselves? I'm putting it there as an option, John. I'm putting it there as an option to consider. Okay. Uh, Mary says, but we will write Dr. Innes at the end, right? Yes, you will. But this case says you're the nurse providing home visits. So straight away, the emergency doctor knows that the situation, okay, this nurse has been visiting the patient at home. They know. Okay. But I agree with Lulu. Option one is simpler. So perhaps it's, if you're going for a super high score, everyone, if you want 400 plus, maybe you need to do something like option two, something to consider little bit more thorough if it's within your skill set everyone have a think about it okay let's continue now we're going to talk about the current situation in detail and before i do that Anu says second is too long 
Why do you say it's too long, Anu? Is there somewhere in the rule book that says it should be a certain length? I don't think so. It's up to the writer. Up to the writer. It's thorough. It's one way to do it. All right. Um, now, paragraph one. Let's have a look. On a home visit today, Miss Stiles complained of chest pain, which was relieved when in a sitting position, as well as shortness of breath and fatigue. She had a low-grade fever, 38.1 C, tachypnea, 28 BPM, and tachycardia, 115 BPM. Her blood pressure was 125 over 78, which was lower than her usual 140 over 90. So what are we describing here, everyone? We're describing the current situation in detail. So this is paragraph one, everyone, straight after the introduction. Okay, so what have we done? What situation, when we use ISBAR, situation tells us, state the problem. Well, we did that, chest pain. When? Today. We've got that. How severe? Well, she's got shortness of breath and fatigue. It was relieved when in the seating position. So we know the severity. Observations are here, everyone. The fever, the tachypnea, the tachycardia, all of that, and her vital signs. We've explained the situation in one paragraph. Great. The doctor, the consultant, knows the current situation of that patient. Doctors in the audience, is this what you want to know first? Is this the information you're after? If you're the admitting doctor, is this what you need to know to help you continue the, um, the care? Or would you rather get the background information that she's got diabetes, that she's got hypertension? What would you prefer if you were going to continue the care? That is my question to you. All right, while I'm waiting for that people to respond to that question, um, I think we'll move on to the next paragraph. I'll just give you a few seconds. All righty. Okay, well, now we're moving on to the assessment paragraph, everyone. Assessment paragraph. So here it is, everyone. Um, Marion says you need diabetes. Yes, Marion, but do you need it first? is the question. Do you need it first or is it acceptable to give that information later? And he says this information followed by the background. We're not even up to the background yet. We're going to talk about the assessment here. Miss Stiles first reported being unwell. Lovely time marker there, everyone. Miss Stiles first reported being unwell one week ago while visiting her sister in Green Valley. She was admitted to Green Valley Hospital with fever, sharp pleuritic chest pain, tachycardia fatigue, and general malaise. Throat swab investigations confirmed viral influenza type B and an echocardiogram indicated pericarditis. Lovely language there, everyone. The investigations confirmed the influenza, the echocardiogram indicated pericarditis. So really, Precise language there by this writer. Her chest x-ray at that time was normal. Uh, and then it says, Miss Stiles was treated with IV saline infusion um, and ibuprofen, 600 milligram TDS. Uh, so we've got that acronym there and discharged after two days under the care of her niece. That's what happened. That was treatment. All right. Now, Aliyah says, if I'm writing to a GP, he would already know that, correct? But in this case, we're not writing to a GP, everyone. We're writing to a, um, it's a hospital admission to a consultant. It's not a discharge. Um, okay. So what have we done here, everyone, in the assessment criteria? Well, we stated what you've done so far. So this is the treatment, this is the first visit, but it's still part of the assessment because it's the chief complaint. It's the pericarditis. 
So what happened, the symptoms, the observations, investigations, relevant details and treatment, but I suppose it's a little bit less important um, than the current situation. So that's why it's coming second. All right, so that's that paragraph, everyone. Okay. Um, Lulu says, do we include normal findings? Sometimes, up to you, whether you think it's relevant. That's decisions that you need to make. Okay. Background, everyone. Background. Well, people were mentioning um, the diabetes and that beforehand. So we've got here the background. Ms. Stahl's medical history includes hypertension, type 2 diabetes, which are well managed with metformin. I'll get to your question in a moment, Priya. With metformin, 500 milligram BD and quinapril, 400 mg BD, respectively. She's been suffering from depression since the death of her husband three years ago, for which she receives regular counselling. So that's all the background information of the hypertension, the diabetes, and the depression, everyone. That's all there in the background. So again, what's background? Information related to the patient. Relevant, that's the key word, not non-relevant. Relevant past medical history. Medications uh, mentioned there as well. And the task said mention the medications, the task question. And it's got a little bit of social information. Not much, um, but a little bit of background. And then that also links back to when we said she was a widow before. It connects back to that as well. Okay, we come to our request, everyone, the last part of our letter. Hopefully we've got through all this with a little bit of time to spare to complete our request. I've got two options here for you, a very standard one. It would be greatly appreciated if you could take over Miss Styles' care and management as you think appropriate. Now that's quite good here. You're writing to a consultant. The consultant will know what to do. So as you think appropriate, it's very respectful. Um, yours sincerely, district nurse. We've got a second option, a um, little bit more specific. I suspect a relapse of pericarditis. Mentioned again, slightly different words, but I suspect a relapse of pericarditis with possible complications and would appreciate your urgent assessment and management. Yours sincerely, district nurse. Okay, that's just reinforcing what was said in the introduction, but adding the additional possible complications um, just to give a little bit more detail there. Okay. And so this is good. What do you want the next health professional to do? You need to state that clearly. That's where we've got be clear. That's what you do in your request. Now, as I said earlier, this is a short request because it's an admission, not a discharge. If it were a discharge, you would expect a bit more content in that request aspect because you probably would be, um, there may be several things that needed to be done. So again, the beauty of ISBAR, it's very adjustable, very flexible. Uh, one question there, can we use suffering um, under the right situation, Litty? Suffering from pain, suffering from headaches, yes. Suffering from hypertension that's well managed, no. Patient's probably not suffering. So look, think about what you're describing and is the patient really suffering or not. Okay. Um, and in the case of suffering, this says suffering from depression. Well, I think you do suffer from depression. I think people who have depression are suffering. Okay. Particularly after the death of her husband. All right. Um, but I wouldn't say she was suffering from diabetes because it said it was well managed. So I don't think it would be appropriate there. So now here's the whole letter, everyone. This is a very busy slide. Um, so this is put all together. Now I'm not going to read it all because you can see it there on your screen. I've just gone through it. Um, but this comes in at around 200 words, everyone. It's bang on in word length. Um, uh, someone asked before, 
do OIT Centre don't tell us exactly if the body of the letter includes the conclusion. I think it depends on what information goes in the conclusion. But OIT Centre do give you an approximate range, 180 to 200 words. This is about 200 words. It's not really counting the conclusion as part of that. Okay. So let's just, let's just look at how we analyze that when we use the OET assessment criteria. There's no point using ISBAR if it doesn't meet the assessment criteria. So that's our next question. Philip says ISBAR is a very useful guide for you. Excellent, Philip. You just practice this and your writing will um, get uh, become very good. Um, question came through. Can we put the date after the address? Yeah, yes, you can. I'm, I'm a bit um, old school. I put the address at the top. But the address could go below the, um, the sorry, the, uh, the date I normally put at the top. You could put the date below the address and that would be fine. Okay, let's analyze it. Purpose, you, the OET wants you to write with good purpose. Purpose of document is immediately apparent and expanded on in the body. Well, it is immediately apparent, isn't it? I love that word, everyone immediately apparent. That's the word we're looking for. Uh, immediately apparent. And it is. It is immediately apparent. We know it's an urgent assessment. And we also know because of a recurrence of pericarditis, it's immediately apparent. Three marks for purpose, everyone. Content. Is the content appropriate to the intended reader? Well, we're writing to a doctor here, everyone. Doctors, you can answer this. Does this information include what you need to do? Uh, we've got the situation is mentioned, the assessment, all the medical details mentioned. So um, it seems to be relevant to the reader as a doctor. The doctor wants to know the vital signs. The doctor wants to know the medication and the history. Um, no important information is missing. Well, I think it's all been included, everyone. So that's good for content. Next one, conciseness and clarity. Conciseness and clarity. Um, length is appropriate. Well, it is, 200 words. Effective summarizing. Yes, that's what they're looking for. And it's that organization and structure has been effectively summarized. Organization and layout. Um, logical flow of information. Well, that's our logical flow. We've put the introduction and the situation in the beginning. We've expanded on the situation in the first paragraph. We've, we've put in our medical assessment and details. Uh, in the second body paragraph, we put the background in the third body paragraph, and then we've got our request in the conclusion. So I would say this would get seven out of seven for organization and layout, everyone. Top marks for that. Flows logically, appropriate paragraphing. And the subsections, this is very important for ISBAR. This is where ISBAR helps you with organization. Look at this. Subsections are well organized because they follow the ISBA. A subsection, a subsection that's a paragraph for situation, for background, for assessment, for request. It's all there for you. Uh, and the genre and style, everyone. Someone asked before, should we put, is it okay to put TDS? Well, look what it says here. Clinical and factual. Well, that's what this is. This is very clinical. And then appropriate use of abbreviations. Now, some people are asking, can we use TDS or BD when writing to doctors? Well, doctors, doctors in the audience, are you happy? Do you know what TDS means? Do you know what BD is? Are you familiar with these terms? I would suggest Doctors would be very familiar with these terms. So I would say if you wrote it in full, you might have a chance of losing marks for genre and style. Um, but by writing it in short form, because you're writing to a doctor, you may actually earn marks 
because you are writing in the correct genre, everyone. Does that make sense? So that is a good thing in this situation. However, if you were writing to someone who may not be familiar with those acronyms, whichever acronyms you have, then you may consider I had better write them in full. Okay, you need to look at lots of examples to get a feel for it. Uh, there are shades of gray, different ways to interpret things. All right, and lastly, language. Language is accurate. Well, it is. I uh, hope you didn't see any mistakes there. I don't think there are. And importantly, when the OET examiners look at language, um, we don't want any interference of meaning. If you get the meaning wrong, if you misrepresent the case notes, that's not a good thing. So very good marks for language. And there is your letter, everyone, meeting the criteria. So try this yourself, everyone. Try this yourself. Um, someone asked, should we put a comma after doctor? I prefer to, again, a little bit old school. I see examples out there where people don't. Find your style and decide what you like and then own it, everyone. It's my advice. Um, moving on, everyone. So use ISBAR for your organization. Pass OET on your next attempt. Remember ISBAR. Introduce and identify situation, background, uh, assessment, request, lock it in. Lock it in. Okay. All right. Good one for nurses, everyone. It's a good exam strategy. I would go for it. And he says, our hospital discourages. Well, yeah, a bit of a head scratcher. There's lots of ways to approach. This is a language test. A lot of it is an industry standard. Many people like it. Um, I think it, it works really well as an exam strategy and something you can take into the future. All right, now, nurses, if you're having trouble start passing OET, come with the OET online. This is exactly what we do in our live classes every single week. We have nurse writing classes on Tuesdays. Make sure you join us. Um, they run at convenient times every week. Um, breaking news, everyone. Uh, lovely doctor from Japan, Yusuke. Congratulations, Yusuke. Yusuke did a one-month course with us. Um, he was new to OET. And look at his results, everyone. All above 350. Yusuke is on his way to his ECFMG registration in the USA. If you're USA bound, it's not too late. Jump on board. Um, he said he really liked, he found OET online, and he was um, just amazed at the excellent materials. That's what we've got and the one-to-one -one tutorials. He says, I was able to achieve the desired score. You should not miss this opportunity. If you're hesitating, if you're on the fence, just jump over that fence. We will get you to pass. Here's Anjali, some inspiration, everyone. I just like showing this one. Anjali um, went from 270 to 360 in writing. We saw that she really worked hard we got her to focus. We used ISBAR. We showed her how to write well. And, um, and she says here she'd highly recommend all nurses to join OET online class to get great success, especially those from India. If you're watching from India, jump on board. Come to our website. As I said earlier, we've got a free trial course. Um, check it out. Okay. All right, and um, just briefly, uh, if you're on a budget, writing self-study, great content, just 25 Australian dollars, can't get cheaper than that. Um, next level up, if you need someone to correct your letters, join our writing correction service. We have an expert team of teachers ready to help you. Um, our really solid courses, everyone. If you need to pass OET and you need to pass it next attempt and you have no options because you have a job waiting, you have a deadline, don't hesitate. It's worth the investment. Virtual Writing Class Platinum, Virtual Writing Class Standard, two excellent courses to get you there. And our top course, everyone, if you really, really want 
everything, the whole box and dice go for our virtual writing class. Ultimate could be the best decision you make and it includes everything that the other courses have plus private writing tutorials. So you've got all your options to suit your budget, to suit your situation, to suit your need. These aren't in US dollars, everyone. They're in Australian dollars. Thank you very much. All right, any final questions? I think we're all good. Um, we'll be back um, again for another session. Keep your eye on the OET online website and OET center website for upcoming dates. We'll let you know. And whatever point in time it is, I hope this helps you pass OET. Good luck and bye for now.